Good evening, and you are watching the English News of Bingfoot Radio Television Station and Newspaper. Now following are the headlines for today. 35 stones to take part in Kashlip Fair in Nomsai. Gabon festivals become national intangible cultural heritage. Vietnam, Cambodia affirm resolve to further enhance relations. Keeping monetary stability amid FED interest rate hikes. A Catholic fair will be held for the first time in Nongsai cities, then for word, and is expected to attract the attention of many shoppers. The fair will be jointly organized by the Department of Industry and Trade in cooperation with the State Bank of Vietnam, Bing Phuc Branch, the Department of Information and Communications, and the Nongsai City People's Committee. With about 25 booths, the festival is expected to see the participations of many local businesses, especially those providing digital technology services and equalities as well as banks. Products introduced are high quality and originating in Vietnam. Visitors will be guided on non-cost payment methods such as QR code, equalities, mobile payments and digital technologies from banks and other service providers. Several promotion and discount programs will also be introduced. The Fund for the Poor in the Phu District, Binh Phuc Province has received over 6.22 billion Vietnam dong since 2020 to help provide timely support to the impoverished in the locality. Since 2020, Dong Phu District has given support of nearly 5.2 billion Vietnam dong to hundreds of poor households. Spending on building and repairing social housing accounted for 3.5 billion Vietnam dong, with a further 404 million Vietnam dong provided to help poor households by Keto Breeze, while nearly 600 million Vietnam dong was spent on rice and gifts for special occasions such as New Year. Thanks to the support 164 households escaped from poverty in 2020, 61 households in 2021, and 77 households in 2022 are 100% of the annual targets. The Kobong Festival in the Phong Town become a national intangible cultural heritage at a ceremony held by the Bureau of Culture and Information of Burang District in cooperation with the People's Committee of Duc Phong Town. The Temple of Thanh Hoang, Duc Hoa, were established 60 years ago, 1962, in Budang District as a place of worship for followers in Duc Phong. Several festivals were created and still exist today, including the Kobong Festival. With agricultural cultivation previously dependent on natural water sources, the Kobong Festival is held when local people pray for favorable weather conditions, abundant crops and good health and happiness. The festival is held every year during the 10th lunar month. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính is paying an official visit to Cambodia at the invitation of his Cambodian counterpart Hun Sen on November the 8th. Prime Minister Chính was welcomed by the host leader. Prime Minister Hun Sen hosted a warm welcome ceremony for Prime Minister Chính and the high-ranking Vietnamese government delegation. Welcoming his guests, Prime Minister Hun Sen said the visit holds great significance in 2022 as the two countries are celebrating the 55th anniversaries of their diplomatic ties. At the talks, the two leaders expressed their delight at the development of bilateral relations. They affirmed their determination to advance the Vietnam-Cambodia relations in an increasingly substantive and effective manner, considering this as an objective and inevitable requirement for both countries. They agreed to boost connecting the two economies in terms of infrastructures as well as regulations and policies, while assisting each other to build an independent and self-reliant economies in each country and to ensure intensive, intensive and effective integrations into the world. The two government leaders also exchanged opinions on border affairs and cooperations in various fields such as education training, transport, finance banking and tourism. At the talks, the two Prime Ministers also discussed some regional and international issues of mutual concerns. Following the talks, they witnessed the signings of 11 documents between the two countries. Chairman Vung Ding Hue on November 8 hosted a reception for Secretary of the National Assembly of People's Power and the Council of State of Cuba, who is on a working visit to Vietnam. Receiving the Cuban Guests
the Vietnamese National Assembly chairman showed his sympathy with the difficulties facing Cuba, due to the embargo against the country, as well as impacts caused by COVID-19, and recent incidents and natural disasters. Vietnam has always supported Cuba, opposed and demanded the lifting of the embargo, he stressed. The Vietnamese top legislator said that the National Assembly of Vietnam and he himself will do their best to further strengthen the sound relationship between the two parties and states. For his part, Comrade Acosta Alvarez, appreciated achievements Vietnam has gained over the past time, as well as its position in the international arena. He emphasized that while Cuba was in need, Vietnam had supported and shared with Cuba in many aspects. He expressed his wish that Vietnam would support Cuba more in the coming time. The two sides agreed that in 2023, the two countries will organize practical activities to mark the 50th anniversary of the visit by leader Fidel Castro to the liberated zone in southern Vietnam. U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Climate John Kerry on November 7 affirmed support to Vietnam in just energy transition and climate change response. At the meeting with John Kerry on the sidelines of the event, Vietnamese Minister of Natural Resources and Environment Chen Hong Ha reiterated Vietnam's commitment made at COP26. Vietnam is rolling out comprehensive measures in energy transition to complete the commitment, has said, stressing that ensuring energy security and reducing greenhouse gas emissions at the same time require international support. Kerry said the U.S. will boost cooperation with Vietnam and work together with the Southeast Asian nation to fulfill climate commitments. The two sides compare notes on ways and solutions to cope with climate change and limit global warming to below 1.5 degrees Celsius, as said in the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Amid the U.S. Federal Reserve continuous increase for interest rate to cope with inflation, the most important task for Vietnam now is to keep macroeconomic stability, with monetary stability being the core, economic experts have said. In the time to come, one of the important issues is that the State Bank of Vietnam, as well as ministries and sectors, have to stay proactive, increase forecasting and analysis, continually update themselves with new changes so as to ensure proactive governance and harmoniously coordinate existing policies. The Prime Minister has ordered public investment be strongly promoted and an expanded and focus-driven fiscal policy be implemented. State Bank of Vietnam Governor Nguyen Thi Hong said the central bank will stay persistent in the monetary governance measures aimed at stabilizing the macroeconomy. According to the official, the bank will govern foreign exchange rates in a way that concurrently makes room for the rates to fluctuate flexibly and absorb external shocks, and intervenes in the forex market to minimize exchange rates' excessive fluctuations thereby helping stabilizing the forex market. Yung Guat Ai refinery has raised its capacity to 112% to contribute to reducing pressure on domestic petrol and diesel oil supply. This is the highest capacity of the plant since it was put into operation in 2009. Based on directions of the government, the Ministry of Industry and Trade and the Vietnam Oil and Gas Group Petro Vietnam, the Bing Sơn Refinery and Petrochemical Transport Company has negotiated with oil field owners the possibility of increasing production output and adding more crude oil sources in November and December for the factory. The protocol recently signed by the Vietnamese Ministry of Agricultural and Rural Development and the General Administration of Custom China will bring opportunities and benefits to Vietnamese banana growers and exporters, said Minister Le Minh Huan. Accordingly, the protocol on plant quarantine for Vietnamese fresh bananas export to China is one of the 13 agreements inked by the Vietnamese and Chinese ministries, agencies and localities during party general secretary with Fu Chiang's visit to China from October 30th to November 1st. 
Huan said the protocol will ensure the official export bananas at stable prices, facilitate customs clearance at border gates to ease overload of farm produce and banana products there, while improving the prestige of Vietnamese bananas. As of 2019, Vietnam was home to 129,550 hectares of bananas, nearly 35,300 hectares of which was in the Mekong Delta, with an output of nearly 489,000 tons. Over 413,000 tons of Vietnamese bananas under quarantine were shipped to China in 2020. The volume increased to 574,000 tons in 2021 and 591,000 tons in the first nine months of this year. That's all for news today. Thank you for watching BBTV News. Goodbye and see you next time.